violence in Ukraine to a TV report in Montenegro showing one elderly couple celebrating International Women's Day has been acknowledged in some unlikely places today. But in Iran, it's a very different picture. In the run-up to a planned demonstration to mark the day, almost all the leaders of the country's women's movement have been arrested and many are still in custody. In a minute, I'll be speaking to a best-selling author whose novel portrayed life for women in Iran. But first, here's our correspondent in Tehran, Francis Harrison. This is the only footage shot on a mobile phone of a women's demonstration against Islamic laws. The protest was put down with extreme force. Anyone who tried to film was arrested and their tape confiscated. And many innocent people got caught up in the unrest. This is where the signature campaign kicked off with a protest last year. I was here and I saw women activists sitting on the grass, peacefully singing feminist songs. And within minutes, women police came and beat them very badly. They used mace spray and tear gas as commuters were making their way home and arrested more than 70 people. Among them, 22-year-old student Delaram Ali, who's now being defended by Iran's most famous woman lawyer, Shirin Ebadi. Delaram spent three days in solitary confinement in jail and is now on trial. I am charged with acting against national security, disturbing public order, and doing propaganda against the system, and having connections to illegal opposition groups. But Shirin Ebadi says it's the police who should be prosecuted. The law allows women to protest peacefully. My client, Delaram, was arrested for protesting against discriminatory laws against women. She was attacked by plainclothes police who broke her hand. We filed a complaint against the police. Unfortunately, although 10 months has passed, no representative of the police has replied to the complaint in spite of being asked to attend many times. And these are photographs of some of the 33 women arrested this week for showing solidarity with others like Della Ram, who are on trial. We were prevented from filming their protest, but just before she was arrested, one woman told us the authorities wanted to prevent any protests on International Women's Day. They want to control us, so it's very important for them to how they can how they can uh, control. Farouk has not been able to see her seven-year-old son for many months. Her story illustrates how the laws in Iran are weighted against women. Even though her husband was abusive, the judge gave him custody. Farouk lost her child and gets no financial support from her ex-husband. From the moment he came home, my husband used to start shouting until he left again. So many times it ended in a physical beating. When my child heard his father's voice swearing, he would usually come in front of me to support me and ask his dad, why are you bothering my mum? Don't do anything to my mum, he'd say. But he would beat the child and throw him aside. Farouk was allowed to see Ali Reza 12 hours a week, but in a police station. It frightened the child so much, she gave up. Now her husband doesn't let them meet and even prevents them talking on the phone. Farouk is worried about the damage it's done to Ali Reza. One time he came to see me after some months and I asked him, do you feel bad that I separated from your father and you were far away from me? He said, no, I could see how much daddy was bothering you. That's it. Farouk says because she loves her son, she's prepared to wait till he's grown up and can decide for himself. Parisa is one of an army of women across Iran collecting signatures on a petition asking for the repeal of discriminatory laws like custody, which automatically goes to the father if a boy is two or a girl seven. The signature campaign has struck a chord with many Iranian women, fed up with being second-class citizens. In any legal case, I'm considered only half a man, 
But as a woman, I could be the breadwinner for my family. Why, if I die, is my blood money only half of that of a man? Maybe I am more effective than a man, so why should my rights be half his? I have seen people around me. My mother and father got separated and my mother had real problems. The right to divorce is really ridiculous. I've seen women go and say their spouse is a drug addict and the judge says stay with him, at least he can support you. The judges do not consider the value and dignity of women. It's disgusting. Some of the women who collect signatures have been arrested. The atmosphere is so tense that many were afraid to be filmed doing it. The authorities see them as a threat. Officials don't want to listen to the women's movement because they think it's something that's come from the West. But if they talked to us, they would see we're the same women who supported them during the Iranian Revolution. But women activists do not find themselves completely alone. Some Iranian men, especially the younger generation, are willing to listen and support their demand for more equality. But the risks are borne by women, some of whom are willing to brave the inside of an Iranian jail to make their point. Francis Harrison in Tehran. Well, I've been talking to Azar Nafizi, author of the novel Reading Lolita in Tehran, about the hidden lives of Iranian women. She now lives in the USA and can't return home. I asked her if she knew the detained women. Um, I know some of them, especially uh, two of them that keep coming to my mind. I mean, uh, ob the most obvious example, of course, is uh, the Nobel laureate uh, Shirin Ebadi. But, but those who are not as well known in the West, who have been fantastic, are people like um, Nushin Ahmadi Khorasani and Parveen Ardalan. Um, uh, they used to have, when I was in Iran, they used to have a um, magazine called The Second Sex, mm -hmm. uh, after Simone de Beauvoir's uh, uh, well-known book. And, and when that was um, banned. Uh, they started an online magazine. Um, um, they, 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 they're, they're fantastic women and, and, and very courageous uh, in so many ways. Tell me what you think about the fate of the women who are uh, under arrest and in detention. What are your fears? The five women who were arrested, um, their charges are acting against national security. And, 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 and against the government uh, and, and, and holding illegal gatherings. Um, each of these charges are um, rather heavy and um, what one, one is afraid of is uh, putting these people under pressure in order to get some sort of um, confession out of them uh, or, or pressure them into stopping their activities. And that is why international support and uh, media coverage is so very vital. Um, have, have this, has a situation for women changed under Ahmadinejad? Well, uh, everything has... So, I mean, you see, the, the, the thing with the Islamic Republic is that everything re remains the same, but then there are openings and closings. Uh, Mr. Ahmadinejad's present presidency has started with um, uh, closings in relation to civil rights. So, yes, there are less spaces uh, for women. But I think what is more important is that uh, since he came to power, uh, women have not only retreated, but in one sense they have escalated uh, their struggles. What do you say to the criticism that it's only Western values being imposed uh, on Iranian women and, and the idea that in fact in the West, it's the West that's got this entirely wrong about the plight of women in Iran? Well, you know, to say that, it, it, this is such a condescending statement um, against Muslim women in general and, 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 and Iranian women in this case. Um, uh, are we saying that uh, Iranian women like to be beaten, that they don't like to have the custody of their child, um, that they enjoy being stoned um, uh, for the charges of um, what is called prostitution and, and, and adultery? Every woman, no matter where they come from, um, they like life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Uh, I think it's rather demeaning uh, to think that only Western women like these things. It's, it would be an understatement to say that you would not be welcomed by the Iranian regime if you tried to go back to Tehran, but do you miss Tehran? 
Oh, I always miss Tehran. Yes, um, and, 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 and that is why I think that um, I have with me the best that Tehran has to offer, which is my memories, uh, my connection to, to, to the friends and to the people and the culture. And, and also, perhaps for me at least, the most important aspect of it is its uh, literature and culture. And that literature and culture goes against anything uh, that the state claims uh, to be uh, Persian uh, or, or Islamic. Azana Fazi, thank you very much. Thank you. Coming up in the program.